without the ball. Hi, I'm Dick Clark. And I'm Lisa Gibbons. We are coming to you live from Wichita with the 42nd annual Miss USA pageant. And there's a beautiful young lady from your state here tonight, and you can cheer her on as she competes for the crown. Somebody's dream is just about to come true. Hope you can join us for all the fun, glamour, and excitement. We're coming up next on, on CBS. CBS. Wichita Tower, Miss USA-1, request clearance to land. Miss USA-1, Wichita Tower, unable landing clearance, coyote on a runway, go around. I wonder if he's landing or taking off. Wichita Tower have to get to the Century 2 Convention Center. There are 51 fantastic women down there waiting to compete for my crown. I'm late. Miss USA-1, coyote is off the runway, in her left traffic, clear to land. Roger, let's roll. Fasten your seatbelts, it's going to be a wonderful night. Live from Wichita, Kansas, the 1993 Miss USA pageant. Starring 51 of the most outstanding young women in the USA. With your host, Dick Clark. Co-host, Lisa Gibbons. Special commentator, Miss USA 1988, Courtney Gibbs Eflin. The reigning Miss USA, Shannon Marchetti. And saluting America's Armed Forces, the United States Air Force Academy, Cadet Corral, and Tabor Drill Team. And now, here are the 51 contestants for the title of Miss USA 1993. They're all singing about a new day, and this really is what's happening in all of the country. New beginnings are happening. Yes, we are right in step of things with a new order. You know, I tell you what, though, we have 51 very talented and beautiful contestants here ready to give up their energy and talent to the country right now. And we're all so glad to be back here again for our fourth year in Wichita. You bet your we love life. You, Wichita. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. You know, this is a very impressive group. It certainly is. They're scholars among them. You realize that this group has a college, what is it called? The uh, grade, point average. grade point average. Notice how smart he is. <laughs> three, I know 3.4, though. I know that's good. 
In fact, they are very bright, very together group of young ladies. We have future doctors and lawyers, engineers and politicians. There is even an Olympic hopeful among them. I know, stop right here. How do you always know this inside stuff? You know all the dirt. You're pretty impressed, aren't you? I am always impressed. It's because we're here and we're digging and we're going to give all of you folks at home the inside story from right up there in our anchor booth position tonight. And my partner this year will be Miss USA 1988, Courtney Gibbs Eplin. I tell you what. If you will control the flow of the backstage stories up there, I will try to control the energy and the enthusiasm here on the stage. We'll do our best to contain it. All right, Deal. fair enough. Now, let's get on with what's going to happen here tonight. During the past week, our contestants have completed a round of preliminary competition to determine the 12 semifinalists, whom we'll name in just a few minutes. During the preliminaries, the judges score the contestants in three events. The swimsuit competition, in which they model identical suits. The evening gown competition, with the ladies wearing gowns which they chose themselves. And finally, the interview competition where each judge spoke individually with each contestant. The scores from these three events have now been added together and averaged for the contestants' preliminary rankings. Now, you're going to see the three scores that each young lady received in those events in just a moment as we begin our traditional parade of states. I love a parade. You know where the best seat for the parade is? Right up there. Mine! So I'll see you back for the crowning. All right, in a couple hours. Good luck, everyone. Lisa Gibbons, ladies Thank and gentlemen. You. Thank you, Lisa. Now, as our contestants introduce themselves in their state costumes, you'll see each young lady's preliminary scores and a visual reminder of how that contestant looked in the preliminaries. They'll tell you a little bit more about themselves. So as you watch, choose your favorite candidate for the crown. And now, here are the 51 contestants for the title of Miss USA 1993. Let's meet them region by region and state by state. Starting with the contestants from the South, Miss Florida. I'm a business major at Palm Beach Community College. From the Sunshine State of Florida, I am Shaquilla Kajada. Miss Tennessee. As an elementary school teacher, I want to help today's children become tomorrow's leaders. From Paris, Tennessee, I'm Cami Gregory. Miss Kentucky. After obtaining my master's degree from Murray State University, I aspire to a career in education. From Kevill, I'm Karen Gibson. Miss Mississippi. A graduate of the University of Mississippi, I now travel my state on behalf of AIDS Awareness from Lambert. I am Sherry Bowles. Miss South Carolina. I'm a cum laude graduate of Converse College with degrees in marketing and psychology. From Packlet, I'm Kelly Gosnell. Miss Georgia. The University of Georgia is my school. After graduation, I plan to pursue a career in broadcast news. From Calhoun, I'm Erin Nance. Miss Oklahoma. I'm Brenda Finishing up my pre-med degree at Oklahoma City University. After completing medical school, I plan to become a surgeon. Miss Virginia. A college freshman majoring in sports medicine, I plan to someday have my own clinic. From Virginia Beach, I am Stephanie Satterfield. Miss North Carolina. A graduate of White Forest University, I am now in commercial real estate development. From Charlotte, I'm Krista Tyson. Miss Arkansas. I'm a graduate of the University of Arkansas and now run my own business in Hot Springs. I am Katie Fish. Miss West Virginia. From Huntington, my name is Jennifer Johnson, a graduate of Marshall University. I now work as a therapist in a community mental health center. Miss Alabama. I now attend Alabama State University and plan to become a spokesperson for youth advocacy programs. I am Tony Johnson. Miss Louisiana. From Leesville, I'm Jennifer Mitchell, a senior at Louisiana State University, aiming for a career in law and government. And now, the contestants from the Northeast, Miss Maine. I'm Jody Cutting, an office coordinator and dental assistant from Waterville, Maine. My plan for the future, a master's degree in business. Miss Delaware. From Cody Beacom College, I am Anne Marie Corral, a senior majoring in business with designs on a career in fashion. Miss Rhode Island. I'm a senior studying international education at the University of Rhode Island. From Wakefield, I'm Julie Roach. Miss Connecticut. From Richfield, I'm Allison Manissis, a student at Providence College with an eye on a career for marketing. Miss New York. Now an international model, I see myself in my future devoting my time and energy to working with children. From Long Island, I'm Wendy Marie Ma. Miss New Jersey. A theater major at Rutgers University, I aspire to a career on the stage and silver screen. From Ocean City, I'm Amy Fissel.
Burgess, Maryland. I'm an early childhood education major at Essex Community College and plan to own my own daycare center. From Baltimore, I am Marianne Simino. Miss Vermont. I have an associate's degree in fashion, a bachelor's degree in marketing. I'm now pursuing a career in marketing. From Burlington, I'm Jody Sicily. Miss Pennsylvania. My bachelor's is in elementary education, and after obtaining my master's, I look forward to a career in the classroom. From Pittsburgh, I'm Kimmery Johnson. Miss New Hampshire. A student at New Hampshire College and a full-time legal assistant working to become a lawyer to represent abused children. From Hampstead, I'm Heidi Cambra. Miss District of Columbia. I'm a graduate of Howard University and now work as a television field producer and reporter. I'm Alina Neves. Miss Massachusetts. A sophomore at Framingham State College. My goal is to become a spokesperson for literacy. From Bellingham, I'm Stacey Blaine. The contestants from the Midwest, Miss Nebraska. An auditor for an international accounting firm. I'm a cum laude graduate of Nebraska Wesleyan University from Lincoln on Tishgate. Miss Minnesota. A speech major at the University of Minnesota. My goal is to produce a TV series focused on women's issues. From Anoka, I'm Christy Benneke. Miss Illinois. A graduate of Northwestern University. I'm now, an, I'm now a paralegal at an intellectual property law firm. From Chicago, I'm Susie Park. Miss Wisconsin. I'm a graduate of the University of Wisconsin and a legislative aide in our state capital. From Madison, I'm Heather Hansen. Miss South Dakota. I'm Kara Rovere, a senior at the University of South Dakota working towards a television career as an international correspondent. Miss North Dakota. As a senior in broadcasting, my goal is to host my own radio program. Look out, Larry King. From Fargo, I'm Jennifer Seminary. Miss Iowa. A graduate of the University of Iowa, I now work as a manager and buyer in the retail industry. From Fort Madison, I'm Jan Hoyer. Miss Missouri. Now a student at St. John's School of Nursing, I see health care in my future. I'm Stephanie Nunn from Springfield, Missouri. Miss Ohio. I'm a senior at Bowling Green State University, where I'm about to get my degree in sports broadcasting. From Cleveland, I am Andrea Passioni. Miss Indiana. I hold a bachelor's degree from the University of Kentucky and I'm a child advocate in my state. From South Bend, I'm Lisa Higgins. Miss Michigan. From Detroit, I'm Kenya Summer Moore, a psychology student at New York University. I'm financing my education as a model. Miss Kansas. Contestants from the Southwest, Miss California. I'm a marketing consultant and professional speaker by day and a master's candidate at Cal State Fresno by night. I'm Jane Olvera. Miss Utah. I'm a double major at the University of Utah, looking forward towards a career in political science. From Salt Lake City, I'm Natalie Piper. Miss Arizona. I'm a commercial actress and image consultant. From Scottsdale, Arizona, I am April Hedish. Miss New Mexico. I'm a marketing major at the University of New Mexico. And someday would like to market my own invention. I'm Daniela Johnson from Albuquerque. Miss Texas. I am an education major at Houston Baptist University, specializing in early childhood. I am Angie Sis. Miss Nevada. A UNLV student. Investigative journalism is my goal. Representing the Silver State of Nevada, I am Alexis Oliver. Miss Hawaii. Hello, everybody. My name is Kellyanne Hu, and I am an actress from Honolulu, Hawaii. Miss Colorado. I'm majoring in elementary education and psychology, and after graduation, I plan to become a teacher. From Golden, I'm Jana Durbin. The contestants from the Northwest, Miss Washington. My name is Candy Fletcher, a freshman at Lower Columbia College in Longview. I'm studying in child psychology. Miss Montana. From Columbia Falls, I'm Kristen Anderson. I'm a professional equestrian trainer preparing for the 1996 Summer Olympics. Miss Oregon. A graduate of the International Air Academy, I hope to someday be a commercial pilot. From Lake Oswego, I am Don Kennedy. Miss Idaho. I'm an engineering major at Purdue University. From Idaho Falls, Idaho, I am Natalie Nukaya. Miss Wyoming. I'm a 
university student studying to become a clinical dietitian. From Cheyenne, I'm Lisa Ann Marie Stoll. Miss Alaska. From Anchorage, I'm Teresa Gates, a master's degree candidate in counseling psychology at Alaska Pacific University. And there they are, ladies and gentlemen. When we return, we'll reveal the 12 semi-finalists. My best friend and I went out last night with our brand new perms. Well, she had gone. to our live broadcast from Wichita. This is our anchor booth position tonight where we'll be commenting on this evening's competition. We'll be giving you all the inside information to help you get to know the girls a little bit better. Someone who certainly knows the girls extremely well already is our special commentator for tonight. She was Miss USA 1988, Courtney Gibbs Eplin. Courtney, come on in. How you doing? I'm doing great. How are you doing? This has been great, thank you. You've been a very busy lady since I you gave up the very crown. very busy. I've had a great time doing some really fun commercials, and I had a wonderful time on daytime TV. And you got a wonderful husband. I got the best husband. Isn't it great when your personal life and your professional life comes together? It's wonderful. That's what we're all working for. Well, during the Parade of States, you saw the scores from the preliminary competitions, which took place over this past week. We'd now like to check and see who the front runners were in each of those three competitions for you. All right, in swimsuit, Miss Michigan takes it out in front. Miss Hawaii in second place, followed by Pennsylvania. For interview, look at this, it's Hawaii in front. They flip-flop, Michigan second this time for interview, followed by New Jersey. And in evening gowns, Georgia, Pennsylvania. And look at Miss Hawaii. Courtney, she is competing very strongly already. Yes, she is, already up there. This will give you some idea of who's leading in the preliminaries. It's not necessarily who will light up that stage tonight, though. That's right, because when the top 12 are chosen, to compete against each other. The chemistry is unpredictable, and anything can happen. That's what makes it fun to watch. I know. Now, I know that you spent a couple of weeks with these girls. Who impresses you? Well, I have to tell you, Georgia absolutely impressed me. I really enjoyed her. And Miss Pennsylvania has a wonderful, wonderful attitude. She's a sweet girl. She's great. And I have to say, not because I'm from Texas, but because I really believe in her, I think Miss Texas will do well. But Texas always <laughs> sends good girls. Thank goodness. They really do. All right, we want to go back to the stage now and see who the judges chose. This the crowd is ready for a show, and Dick is ready to announce the 12 semifinalists. We have 51 extraordinary young women up here, but only 12 will be chosen to continue as semifinalists in tonight's competition. Later, we'll narrow that to six finalists, and then choose the final three contestants. Let me pick up the results now, if I may, please. Thank you, sir, very much. Now, each contestant scores in the preliminary swimsuit interview and evening gown competitions have been added and averaged for a composite score. And I'll read the names with the 12 highest scores. And as each semifinalist comes forward, you'll see her composite score on your screen. Ladies, if you're ready, this is what we've been waiting for all week. All right. This is in random order. The semifinalists are Miss California, Jane Alvera. All right, for her state pageant, Jane wrote in her journal, my goal is to be Miss California. Miss Pennsylvania, Kim Marie Johnson. She made the 12, she probably pass out. Well, she's still standing. Looking great, too. Miss South Carolina, Kelly Gosnell. My home state. 1980 was the last time Miss South Carolina won this pageant. She went on to win Miss Universe. You know, I wonder if Kelly knows that. Miss New Jersey, Amy Fissel. We're in for a treat with this one. Yeah, I hear that she's one of the funniest girls here. Right, look for her to shine in the interviews. Miss Iowa, Jan Hoyer. Okay, Jan Hoyer has a chance to go for the crown. And Lisa Beauty runs in this family. Her sister Jeannie was Miss Iowa in 1982. Miss Kansas, Tavia Shackle. Tonight, this place will really rock. 
Six names remain. Here is Miss Michigan, Kenya Summer Moore. Okay, Kenya Moore, our next lucky lady, looking gorgeous. She has been in pageants since she was 14, so we thought she'd do well. Miss Tennessee, Cammie Gregory. Cammie's a teacher from Paris, Tennessee. She's made the cut. And Lisa, wait till you hear her southern accent. It is killer. I love it. Four to go. Miss New York, Wendy Marie Mock. Very confident, Wendy Marie Mott gets the nod. She has lots of modeling experience, so look for her to be very poised on that stage tonight. Miss Texas, Angie Sis. Courtney, you're right, the incredible Texas streak continues. Can you believe it? Texas has made the semifinals every year but one since 1974. Two names remain. One is Miss Hawaii, Kelly Hu. Of course. Kelly was Miss Teen USA in 1985. She has a great presence on stage. She looks so gorgeous in the preliminaries, we were sure she'd make it. And finally, Miss Georgia, Erin Nance. Georgia always sends great girls. Erin's no exception, if they've, and they've made the semifinals eight times since 1978, but have never won. Ladies and gentlemen, the 12 semifinalists for the title of Miss USA 1993. don't they? Oh, they do. They really do beautiful smiles. You can probably hear from this crowd, there are friends and family from every state in the union cheering on their favorites, but they can't hear us. In fact, you guys are the only ones who can hear us. The judges can't, neither can the contestants. That's right. We don't want to make the girls any more nervous, and it also assures that we won't influence the scoring. Those composite scores, by the way, that you just saw for the semifinalist, history, that's over. Those are all erased. Those girls now begin tonight's competition, each on equal footing. And remember, it's all live, so you'll see everything that the judges see to determine tonight's winner. All right, the most depressing part of the night, swimsuits, coming up next. Who is in great shape? Well, Miss California, Jane Olvera, has done a thousand sit-ups a day. Oh, get over it. Really? This girl needs something else to do with her time. She's like a Marky Mark. Well, Tavia Shackles has been working out with a Kansas City Chiefs head trainer. Yeah, in fact, even the pageant vets from backstage say that this girl has the killer vibe. Oh, she looks terrific. And also watch out for Amy Fissel, Miss New Jersey. She brought her very own tanning bed. To the pageant? Yes. These girls, they brought so much stuff, they just don't have the meaning of traveling light, do no, they? No, they don't. <laughs> Not at all. Of course, we should say the leading contender, one of them has got to be Kenya Moore, Miss Michigan, right. who looks fabulous. She won the top preliminary swimsuit score. Oh, she was a knockout in preliminary in the competition. And speaking of competition, it's a great experience. If you're between the ages of 15 and 26 and would like to enter the Miss USA or Miss Teen USA state pageants, watch for a special 800 number at the end of the show. That phone call could change your life. Meanwhile, we sure hope you'll stay tuned for the Catalina Swimsuit Competition. Welcome back. You know, there's one thing that hasn't changed about the Miss USA pageant in the last 42 years. We can't conduct the competition without the very distinguished group of people who serve as our judges. And as I introduce them to you, audience, if you will, please hold your applause till the end. Our first judge has graced more than 600 magazine covers, and with her work in foreign feature films, she's becoming one of Europe's hottest stars. She is actress and supermodel Carol Alt. He's done everything from Shakespeare to Mork and Mindy, best known to millions as the lovable Bull Shannon on the hit series Night Court. He's Richard Maul, star of The Christina Show, one of the top 10 Hispanic TV shows in the country. She's producer, journalist, and radio personality, Christina Saraleghi, travel editor for Vogue magazine. He's authored hundreds of articles and four books, including The Movie Lover's Guides to Hollywood New York. He's Richard Alleman. As director of scouting and talent development for IMG Models, she's one of the most influential people in the modeling world today, Leah McCloskey. His name is synonymous with glamour. He's created a house of fashion and fragrance on Rodeo Drive and was the creator and founder of Giorgio Beverly Hills. He's Fred Heyman. She is founder and CEO of the Tova Corporation, acclaimed for its line of quality beauty products and personal service. She's international beauty authority, Tova Borgnine. During his long career as a star with the New York Rangers, he led his team to 12 playoffs and is the leading scorer in Ranger history. He's hockey great, Ron Greshner. She's the actress who keeps audiences awake as Detective Rita Lee Lance on the CBS USA series Silk Stockings. She is Mitzi Capture. 
In a career spanning three decades, his unique vocal style has garnered him more than three dozen number one hits on the Billboard charts. He is country music legend, Charlie Pride. Ladies and gentlemen, our judges. I'd like to explain our scoring system, which is similar to the Olympics. As each of our contestants competes, our judges enter a score ranging from 1.0 to a high of 9.99 into their computer terminals. You'll see the judges' names and scores on your screen. Then the highest and lowest scores are eliminated and the rest are averaged like this. Each contestant's average scores in the swimsuit, interview, and evening gown competitions are added and the top six scores will determine the six finalists. Looks like the competition is about to begin, so let's go back to the stage. Thank you, Courtney. We begin our semifinals with the Catalina Swimsuit Competition, where the contestants will also be modeling Federico Leone shoes. Now, what better place to surround our beautiful ladies than a magical paradise under the sea? As they compete, we've asked each contestant to tell us a little bit more about herself, and we begin with Miss California. I initially entered pageants to earn money to put myself through school, and after my first pageant, I, I discovered I really enjoyed the stage and enjoyed the microphone. And so I was once a quiet, shy child, and after pageants became a very outgoing, very assertive person. And I think I owe who I am and where I am today to pageants. Miss Pennsylvania. The perfect date for me is to pop popcorn, rent movies, and just watch it and sit up and talk all night. And also going to a football game and cheering the Steelers on and getting rowdy. <laughs> Miss South Carolina. Miss South Carolina has given me an opportunity to go into some schools and talk about self-esteem to children, particularly in schools where the children are at a disadvantage, they come from bad um, home lives, and that's been really great. Miss New Jersey. The summer I was eight years old, I began writing and directing and producing my own backyard plays using my, uh, my playmates as cast members, and we would invite everyone in the neighborhood to come and watch these plays, and, and ever, I've been acting ever since then, so I guess you can say that um, being an actor is not just what I do, but who I am. Miss Iowa. This year I've had the opportunity to work with the Make-A-Wish Foundation. It's an organization to help children with life-threatening illnesses. There I've met my good friend Christopher and he's taught me to live life to the fullest and live each day at a time. Miss Kansas. For my workout with the head strength and conditioning coach, the Kansas City Chiefs, and he pushes me very hard. I thought that I might look like a linebacker, but I don't. And he tells me that I'm an athlete, not a beauty queen. And so I push myself, but I love it. Miss Michigan. Uh, besides a family member, I would have to say Maya Angelou has influenced me the most. After reading her writings, I was inspired to write poetry of my own, and to date I have over 50 poems that I've written. I admire her the most because she's come from a difficult past and she was able to turn her life around. Miss Tennessee. My happiest times are when I'm in the classroom. I look at these children, and they're at such a young age, four years old, and they're so full of life, and they've got so much in front of them. And to know that I'm helping shape those lives and, and to see how they are with me and how they pay attention to everything I say, it's the most wonderful feeling. Miss New York. In the last few years, I've been able to be on my own enough that I've learned about who I am as a person instead of, you know, people always telling you this is what you're like and this is what you seem to be. Instead, I've actually learned who I am, what I'm about, and I like me. <laughs> Miss Texas. As a child, I was very shy. I started participating in dance recitals, which really helped me as far as having to perform on stage. 
and being in pageants has been the best experience of my life. It's really helped me to open up and gain lots of self-confidence. And I look at myself and I can't believe the things that I'm doing now. It's wow. Miss Hawaii. These dog races that we went to the other day, and there was a dog that I had bet on, and he fell down during the race, and he went skidding across the track and just got right back up and started running. And I thought to myself, that's me. That's, that's who I am. Miss Georgia. I started competing in tennis when I was nine, and I believe that it's good for children because it taught me things that I've carried throughout my life, such as how to win with humility and how to accept defeat. And most importantly, it's taught me how to handle life's ups and downs. Thank you, ladies. That completes our swimsuit competition for Miss USA 1993. Remember the old days when they used to think that if girls worked out like the guys, you would look like one of the guys? Isn't that true? I don't think so. Not, Not with anymore. these girls. <laughs> All right, we want to turn to the minor now. We'll just show you exactly what the judges thought about our girls in the first event of the semifinals. For swimsuits tonight, look at this. Miss Georgia has come on strong. All of a sudden, she is out in front, followed by Miss Pennsylvania. Miss Hawaii is still competing well. And look how close it is between Hawaii and Michigan. I would look for these, these girls to really keep it up this evening. That's right, and Miss Ca and the Catalina will award the winner. Miss Georgia is either a cash prize of $1,000 or a photo modeling contract worth $2,500. Now, the girls have been working really hard to prepare for tonight, but they've also been having a whole lot of fun here in Wichita. So we followed them around with a camera so you could join in. You know, it takes a lot of gear for one of these two-week pageants, but this was just Miss Wyoming's carry-on bags. The rest of her things actually arrived in a U-Haul. <laughs> The first day of the pageant is always full of lots of new faces, chaperones, and I think somewhere in here is a roommate. Hi. There are some beautiful faces to greet our contestants at the Mid-America All Indian Center. Great costumes. Well, everybody wanted to meet the girls. You can understand why. They did have time for a quick trip to the zoo. Lots of new faces at the zoo. And what do you think? Maybe they'll meet some wild hunks here? <laughs> well, this guy's kind of cute, but I doubt if that's what they had in mind. Give me another kiss. Looks like they found their hunk. Come on, guys. Let's hit the trail. Kansas is a stop on the old Santa Fe Trail, so our contestants saddled up and headed out. Some of them are pretty good equestrians. Look at this girl. <laughs> There's some terrific sightseeing all around Wichita. Well, here's a real sight to behold. Our contestants trying their skills in the Pizza Hut test kitchen. <laughs> Luckily, cooking is not part of tonight's competition. <laughs> Later on, our girls got back into their Catalina sportswear to rehearse the dance number. That's right, and we'll be seeing that number later tonight's telecast. Then they got a challenge from the Wichita Thunder hockey team. Both teams, our girls and their guys, all laced up for the big moment. Hey, do you have a Zamboni driver's license? These guys over next door that are... Uh... Dying, they think they can beat you, so uh, let's go out and uh, show them something here. And, uh, I'm sure enjoy the job guaranteed now or what? <laughs> She's a little bigger than I am. Okay, here's the face off. Check out this check. That looks like the ice capades, doesn't it? She shoots, she scores. Wichita's other athletes found our contestants at the karaoke club, doing a little talent and taking care of business. And plenty of chances to take photographs. Lots of memories to last a lifetime. We have certainly had a great time. But in the middle of all the fun, there was a bit of competition going on in this group, too. And Miss Photogenic. This year, they chose Miss Hawaii, Kelly Hu. 
After two weeks of fun and rehearsals, the contestants get to know each other very well, and they vote among themselves for the Miss Congeniality Award. Their winner this year is Miss Massachusetts, Stacy Blaine. The Best State Costume Award is voted on by a panel of judges, and this year they chose the beautiful Native American-inspired costume worn by Miss Kansas, Tavia Shackles. The Contact Lens Council selects the winner of the Most Beautiful Eyes Award. And this year, it's a second victory for Tavia Shackles, Miss Kansas. I guess you could see why Miss Kansas made the semifinals. All right, the interview competition is coming up next. Courtney, a lot of good talkers, but who are the real motor mouths? Well, let's see. Keep your eye on Erin Nance. Miss Georgia, mm -hmm. she's a broadcast major, but not only that, she has her very own TV talk show. Oh, that'll do it. That's right. And Miss New York, Wendy Marie Mock. Now, then, she's a model. She travels all over the world. She says interview doesn't even scare her because she's always defending New York. Oh, right. Well, after she goes around defending New York, I guess this should be a piece of cake for her. That's right. No problem. Well, I think we should probably look for Kelly Hu to do extremely well also. Absolutely, absolutely. She was Miss Teen USA in 1985, and she's, after already being a winner once, to get here tonight, she had to go all the way back to the beginning and compete at the state level again. And start all over. You know, it's interesting, she lost her voice a couple of days ago. She couldn't speak at all, so I'll be curious to see how well she does tonight. We'll be watching. All right, stay with us, won't you, because the interviews are next. This is for my best friend, who said, you'll never find the perfect red. This is for my mother, who said, darker hair is going to make you look older. This is for women who want the best ultras. This is for my husband, who said, you're thinking of going what? Blonde. 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 Only Ultress has a gel colorant that takes ordinary color to ultimate color. Ultress color. Hair that's never looked or felt better. This is for my sister, who used to have the best hair in the family. Ultress from Clairol. Gorgeous hair is the best revenge. You know, it's my response. Welcome back as we begin the interview competition. It's the second event of our semifinals. Now, the young woman who wins the title of Miss USA will be working full-time for the next year, making hundreds of public appearances, so her ability to express herself is very important. Now, these interviews are spontaneous, they're unrehearsed, and the contestants are judged on poise, intelligence, personality, and the content of their answers. We'll begin with Miss California, Jane Alvera, who's 24 years of age. She's a marketing consultant with a 4.0 grade point average. Oh, it says here you run customer service training programs for yes. private corporations. What's that all about? I studied in school for my master's degree. I studied the communication within organizations. And what I've done now in my career is extrapolate that and look at the relationship between the customer service representatives in an organization and the customers that come into the store. And I believe it's very important that you have good communication relationship with all your customers. Tell me what you advise them to do if a customer is really obnoxious. <laughs> the first thing I always advise is not to become defensive. It's very easy to take an insult personally when a customer comes into your store. So I suggest you just take a deep breath and hear them out and let them, let them air it out a little bit. And I, I heard you say earlier in, uh, I don't know, it was in the swimsuit competition, some of you, you've been in pageants for eight years. Can you get too used to this sort of thing, or is it always exciting? Oh, it's always exciting. You always get butterflies right before you come on stage. I would never know it by looking at you, my dear. <laughs> oh, thank would you, you step over here for thank the judges, please? This is Miss California, Jane Alvera. Next is Miss Pennsylvania, Kimmery Johnson. She has a master's degree candidate in elementary education, wants to be a teacher someday. Teaching takes a lot of patience. Are you a patient person? Yeah, I have to say that I am patient because when you work with children, you have to be. Have you always been that way? No, I haven't. I had to learn to be that way. You know, our schools are under fire these days, a lot of criticism. What would you suggest that we could do to, to improve the situation? As far as the criticism in the uh, schools, especially in the younger schools, elementary schools, I feel that it would be nice if the children were to have uniforms, all of them, so that way they wouldn't give in to peer pressure and not have to wear Nike tennis shoes and just a plain pair of tennis shoes. A lot of people agree with you on that. Now, you're talking a little bit about sports. Let me ask you, are you really a football fan as much as I hear? I am a big football fan. Make a lot of noise. You, are you at the stadium or you're at home? I'm at the stadium, screaming. Making a fool of yourself. <laughs> Definitely. Now, if you win the crown tonight, will you spike it or do a, a touchdown dance or anything like that? Can we expect anything exciting? I don't think I'll do that. You'll be under control? <laughs> I don't know, I might not be, but 
I'll try to keep my control. <laughs> Step over here, if you will, please. For the judges, this is Miss Pennsylvania, Kim Marie Johnson. Next is Miss South Carolina. This is Kelly Gosnell. She's uh, 22 years of age, a recent graduate of Converse University and studying uh, marketing and psychology. What are you going to do with the two degrees? Well, I plan to attain a master's degree in school psychology and work on the elementary school level uh, as a school psychologist. Now, your school was an all-girls school? Yes, it is. Did you miss having guys around, or didn't it matter? Well, Wofford College is 1.3 miles from us. It's in walking distance. We know that very well. well who walks to where? <laughs> do you walk there, or do they come to you? We walk there. <laughs> oh, it's a new world. Tell, tell me about your hometown. Is Packlet? Yes, it's Packlet, and it's very small. We have about 1,200 people. Um, there's a Packlet, Packlet Mills, and a Central Packlet. You can see Packlet Mills from Central Packlet. That's how small it is. Um, but it's just lots of great people. Have you lived there all your life? I've lived there 22 years. What, ha what do you learn living in a small town versus a big town? Not that you've been in the big town, but do you think it was an advantage? <laughs> Yes, I do. I think it helps you develop your creativity because you have to um, be, a cre before you can drive, you have to be very creative to figure out what's, what you can do for fun. All right, fair <laughs> enough. Thank you so much. Would Thank you step you. over here? This is Miss South Carolina, Kelly Gosnell. <laughs> Next is Miss New Jersey, Amy Fissel, who's a scholarship student at Rutgers University, a straight A average student, Woo! studying to be an actress now. Who are some of your favorite performers these days? Uh, mostly my favorite performers are comedians. Um, I really like Robin Williams, mm. and um, I like Eddie Murphy a lot. Are you a comedian? Uh, I try to be sometimes. <laughs> uh, let, let me ask you a serious question. A lot of people are very critical about actors being paid too much. Do you think they are? What's your opinion? Absolutely not. People never say uh, that doctors are paid too much or lawyers are paid too much. Acting is a profession, just like anything else. You bring happiness to all. We certainly do. We try. Now, I am told that you have a lot of pets at home. Now, I got four dogs and a cat. Can you top that? I have uh, three dogs, two cats, a rabbit, a big piranha tank, and two exotic birds. A I piranha tank? Yes. You taught me, definitely. What happens when a guy comes over to pick you up for a date and sees this whole menagerie? Is it a little baffling? I think it's, I think it's a little scary at first. He's like, whoa, I didn't know you had all these animals. But, you know, then, then they get used to them, and they're really friendly, and they're Breaks nice to be yes. around. Yes, it does. Thank you so much. Thank Would you. you step over here for the judges? This is Miss New York, Amy Fissel. What did I do? Miss New Jersey? I beg your pardon. I changed states. Well, they're neighboring states. Thank you. Miss Iowa is next. Jane Hoyer, who's a graduate of the University of Iowa. She now uh, is a menswear buyer in your family's business. When did you start working with the family business? Well, my dad's had a, the men's clothing store for 37 years, so it's been my whole life. In fact, my mom tells me when I was a week old, I was in the store in a baby blanket. Everybody works in the store? Yes, my whole family, except my brother. He doesn't like it? He's the attorney. He's our lawyer for the store. <laughs> he keeps the rest of you on the straight and narrow. Now, you, I, I find this hard to believe, but you got a dog that goes to work? Yes, his name's Pierre. He's 14 years old, and he's my good luck charm, and he's in the audience. Pierre is here as we speak. <laughs> oh, there he is, yeah. How old is he? He's a 14-year-old toy poodle. He's, so that makes him about 100. <laughs> he's, he's enjoying every moment and bringing you lots of good luck. I hope so. Thank you so much. Nice Thank to have you. Thank you. Thank you. Please step over here. This is Miss Iowa, Jan Hoyer. Next is Miss Kansas, Tavia Shackles, a 21-year-old scholarship student, University of Missouri, studying political science. We have a few fans here tonight. I hope so. Now, they, you do public relations work for the Kansas City Chiefs. What do you do? Well, I get to work with mainly the media, making sure that they have the credentials and that they need to get onto the field and in the locker room, which is a whole lot of fun, and a little bit with player appearances, kind of like what a state director does for a pageant girl, making sure that photos are going to be taken and that there's someone there to meet them at the appearance and that it's all set up. What would you say to an athlete who said he had no he or she had no responsibility to be a role model for children? 
Oh, that's definitely not true. I think that anyone who's in the public eye definitely has a responsibility uh, to set a good example. And I think that most of the players at the Kansas City Chiefs realize that, and they're very involved in community activities. They take up great charitable causes, and, and they're great representatives. So. I thank you very, very much. This is Miss Kansas. If you'd step over here, please. That's Tavia Shackles, Miss Kansas. Thank you, ladies, and that completes our first six interviews. We'll have the rest of our semifinal interviews in just a moment, right after this. Your teeth aren't flat, but your... And our last six contestants will begin with Miss Michigan. This is Kenya Summer Moore, who's 22, professional model and student at New York University, and uh, going to be a child psychiatrist. I read in your bio, Kenya, that your grandmothers have been really powerful influences on you. How so? Most definitely. My grandmother had a hand in raising me. She raised me since I was three days old, and also along with five other children. And now she's raising her mother who has Alzheimer's disease. So she's been a great influence in my life. She's such a positive woman and full of strength and energy, and she's just really special. Are both your grandmothers here tonight? Yes, they are. Uh, uh, undoubtedly, the folks at home will catch a glimpse of them. You and I will never know. One of your grandmothers owned a boutique? Yes, my grandmother Moore does. Did she clothe you when you went to school? <laughs> she actually did. I think I was the best dressed person in school. Every day I had a different outfit, and that was really nice. She spoiled you rotten. I think so. All right, and that's what grandmoms are for. <laughs> now that you have matured, do you really think that it makes a lot of difference what you look like in life? No, I don't think so. My grandmother instilled the value that the inner beauty comes from what your soul says and how you display yourself and how you treat other people. You have to be very kind and everything comes from within. So beauty is within to me. Thank you very much. Thank Would you, you step over here for the judges? This is Miss Michigan, Kenya Summer Moore. All right, next is Miss Tennessee. This is Cami Gregory. She's a teacher from Paris, Tennessee, who enjoys whitewater rafting, takes part in the uh, volunteer work of the Special Olympics. What is a career awareness program? What's that all about? Well, career awareness programs that I'm interested in are actually programs that get parents interested in helping raise children. As an elementary teacher, I see a lot of children that need a little extra advantage in life, and sometimes parents have setbacks, and they have, need a little extra help. And these programs help parents become aware of helping provide daycare and different things for the children. How old are the kids you teach? Well, they range in the age from four years old to seven years old. This is your first year? This is my first year. In fact, this morning I got a very special phone call. What? Well, about 6.30 the phone rang and it was a tape recording of my students in my class and I heard a lot of, Miss Kami, we miss you, and Miss Kami, have you forgotten us yet? And we love you very much. And I know they're out there watching tonight. They say the first year is the toughest. Have you found it to be so? It's been very tough, and as Miss Tennessee, it's taken a lot of responsibility. I've had to learn to juggle a lot of different things, but it's been wonderful, and these children are going to follow me forever. I'll never forget this class. Thank you ever so much. Would you step over here for the judges? This is Miss Tennessee, Cammy Gregory. Next is Miss New York, Wendy Marie Mock. She's a model from Levittown. And Joy Sports, working with children, comes from a bicultural background. Now, what does a bicultural background mean? Well, my father is Oriental, he's Chinese, and my mother is Polish, believe it or not. That's a great combination. Now, what do you learn from the two of these folks? Well, the Orientals have a very strong honor system. They teach you at a very young age to respect the elders in your, in your family and in the community, whether you know them or not. Um, they teach a lot of love and understanding, and respect was really instilled in me at a very young age. And how does your mom differ from your dad, and culturally speaking? <laughs> well, culturally speaking, I'll skip over to their personality, actually. <laughs> My mom, we nickname her Mush, because, Mom, I'm sorry, but she cries when a cartoon dog dies on TV. <laughs> She's a sentimental type. Yes, yes, very much so. And my father's the strong one. He, he, my mother uh, looks to my father for support, and my father looks to her for sensitivity. So who do, I have around. Who do you take after? I'm a combination of the two. Two of the best. Yes, though. I think I got the best of both. Thanks, Thank, mom. Thank yeah. you so much. <laughs> if you would step over here now, this is Miss New York, and this is Wendy Marie Mock, Miss New York.
<laughs> All right, here's Miss Texas, Angie Sisk, who's on the dean's list at uh, Houston Baptist University, majoring in elementary education. Teachers have a lot of influence on children. Did any teacher ever influence you in your life? Yes, she did. I had a high school teacher who believed in me and expected a lot out of me, which made me work very hard. And being in the field of education, I hope I can influence children's lives and make a difference like she did for me. Well, maybe you, uh, let's hope you will be an inspiration all along the way. What was her name? Her name is Phyllis McLennan, and she's here tonight to support me. Well, I hope we get a shot of her there. Now, <laughs> what is the secret of getting kids interested in education? I think that you have to find out what their desires are and what their interests are and try to pertain that to what you're teaching. And in doing that, you stimulate interest and encourage them to learn. Now, your mother worked so your dad could get his degree in, co degree in college. Would you do the same if the circumstance came up? I probably would, but right now I'm very career-oriented and would like to teach, and that's what I'm pursuing right now. Well, let, me, let me take it way down the road. Suppose you did get married someday. Would you ever allow your, or allow, would you, uh, and that's the wrong word, would you uh, agree with letting your husband be a house husband and you do the work? Sure. <laughs> that is outside the house. He'd work at home. You'd agree to that? Um, I don't know. We'd probably have to share the chores. You'd have to talk yes, about it a little bit. Step over okay. here, if you would, please. This is Miss Texas. Angie Sisk. Next is Miss Hawaii, Kelly Hu, who's an actress from Hawaii. She appeared in the uh, motion picture The Doors, recently co-starred with my friend Leslie Nielsen in a film that's coming out in May. What is the title of this film? It's called Surf Warriors of the South China Seas. A heavy drama, obviously, with Leslie Nielsen. <laughs> what kind of a part do you play? I have the female lead. Um, I, it's actually a children's action comedy. Now, they told me there was something about love scenes. Now, this is not you and Leslie. No, it's not. Um, I play opposite Ernie Reyes Jr. And one of the first things we had to do uh, in our filming was a kissing scene. And you had to learn this? Actually, we did. You know, we kept knocking teeth and banging gums. And, and so during uh, our lunch break, we actually had to go back into the trailer and practice. Sure you did. Yeah. Mm hmm And I'll believe that. No, let me get serious for a second. You've traveled a great deal. What have you learned from traveling? Oh, I have learned such a great deal. Um, being able to, to discover different cultures and learning so much about different people, you realize that people all over the world are really the same. Thank you so very much. If you'd step over here for the judges. This is Miss Hawaii, Kelly Hu. And now this is Miss Georgia, Erin Nance. She's 20 years old, a junior at the University of Georgia. Majoring in broadcasting, she's co-hosted her own live talk show. Where did you do that? In Dalton, Georgia. It's a cable television station, and it's live two days a week. Did you ever get yourself in a pickle or have trouble with it? Oh, yes. One time I had uh, the Shriners on, and it was a Shriner and his wife, which is a Fazette. And they started arguing, and it's live, and I couldn't control it. And I was going, yes, I think it's about time to break for a commercial. We'll be right back with more. <laughs> did they go to the commercial and save you? No, they kept arguing. <laughs> Well, that's the joy of live television now. We're here live tonight. You have aspirations to do network broadcasting? Yes, I do. I would like to go on and host um, something live on a national. All right, let's practice right now. I'll hold the mic, and you're going to... Uh, we're now on CBS, and we're live. What, tell us what's happening. Do what, what, is, what they call in news. Is stand-up? Yes. Hello, I'm here with Dick Clark watching the Miss USA contest where the field has just been narrowed from 51 to 12 beautiful young ladies vying for the title of Miss USA. Stay tuned to see if your choice runs away with a crown where the people are friendly and excitement is in the air from Wichita, Kansas. Help, help, help! <laughs> Thank you ever so much. Please step over here for the judges. That's Miss Georgia. That's Aaron Nance. All right. Thank you, ladies. That completes our interview competition for Miss USA 1993. <laughs> All right, that's it. Let's get Miss Georgia up here. My goodness. The girls were terrific. They were all incredibly poised. Let's see what the judges thought about them and how they scored them in this interview competition. Well, there she is. She was incredible. Miss Georgia out in front. The hometown favorite, Miss Kansas, is in second place. And in third position tonight, very close between second and third, is Miss Pennsylvania. And look at this. Miss Hawaii still competing very strongly as well. This is how the rest of our girls rated for the interview competition. And that does complete two-thirds of the semifinals. And the evening gown competition will be coming up soon. But when we come back, you'll see all the contestants in a down-home, two-step-in-western boogie. This is great. Stay tuned.
Two thumbs up for Unto Town. You know, this great city has a very, very colorful Wild West past, and tonight we're going to have some fun recalling those rowdy days with a contemporary country music hit. Our contestants and the reigning Miss USA Shannon Marketic have rounded up some red hot boots from Shepler's Western Wear and a posse of handsome cowpokes for a boot scootin' boogie. Good stuff. Congratulations, ladies. Shannon, you were fabulous as always. Nicely done. Now, we told you earlier that the new Miss USA had a very busy year ahead of her. She'll find a few days off to enjoy $200,000 worth of cash and prizes that go along with the crown. Now, here's our reigning Miss USA, Shannon Marketic, to give us a behind-the-scenes look at what awaits tonight's winner. Miss USA receives a year's supply of Ogilvy precisely right. The home perm you just can't get wrong. Precisely right by Ogilvy, the official home firm of the Miss USA pageant, awards $7,500 to the winner who is precisely right. In addition to winning a stunning evening wear wardrobe of exclusively Sherry Hill Creations, Miss USA receives $5,000 cash and the incomparable Minolta Maxim 7XI SLR system, the world's most intelligent camera, plus a master camcorder and the world's only autofocus binoculars only from the mind of Minolta. She wins the all-new Cobalt 198 sport boat powered by the dependable Mer Cruiser. Cobalt's relentless pursuit of perfection places the 198 in a class of its own. You can own a Cobalt or you can compromise. And active. From Catalina, Miss USA receives $7,500 plus a new wardrobe of Catalina's exciting swimwear and sportswear in fresh, attractive designs and colors. Catalina, the official supplier of swimwear for the Miss USA pageant. From Hawaiian Tropic Sun Care Products, Miss USA receives a one-week trip to Hawaii for two. Hawaiian Tropic, world-class sun protection available in over 85 countries around the world. Aloha from Hawaiian Tropic. Miss USA will also enjoy a new cellular phone plus $5,000 awarded by Kansas Cellular. I'd love to. Have him call my agent. Tonight's Miss USA pageant winner will receive a brand new 1993 Pontiac Brand Am GT. With its sunny looks, powerful 16-valve engine, and standard anti-lock brakes, the new Grand Am GT is pure driving excitement. The Contact Lens Council awards Miss USA $7,500 plus $500 in vision care for her family. 
Many of the Miss USA delegates are among the 24 million Americans who enjoy great vision and good looks with contact lenses. See the difference contacts make. The Miss USA coronation ring created by Barriers of Wichita, superbly crafted in 18 karat gold and platinum, awarded by the Midwest premier jeweler, Barriers. A selection of lingerie and loungewear from Cameo Coutures of Dallas, the world's oldest and largest direct selling lingerie company. Cameo speaks the language of lingerie. A queen's ransom of cobra perfume by Carlo Dini. She'll capture his heart with this exciting fragrance collection uniquely presented by the genius of Carlo Dini. Cobra perfume, wear it with caution. She wins a $12,000 shopping spree at world famous Flemington's where she'll spend the day choosing from their huge selection of leathers and furs style for all occasions. Awarded by Flemington Fur Company, Flemington, New Jersey. And finally, Miss USA receives this gorgeous 18 karat gold ladies watch, studded with 56 diamonds from Bertolucci Watch Company. Bertolucci, the finest Italian design new Swiss classic for the 90s. Thanks, Jake. That's a wrap, guys. All right, thank you, Shannon. Well, the girls are changing into their evening gowns, so we thought, what the heck, let's change. We'll change, too. Another half hour, another gown. Why not? That's right. All right, evening gowns are coming up next, so what do we think? Well, I think we should keep an eye on Miss New Jersey, Amy Fissel. Mm -hmm. She told me the other day that she has nightmares about showing up on stage in her evening gown and her tennis shoes. Well, we'll be sure to check her shoes then when she comes out tonight. I think we should. Who else? Um, one of the really great gowns is Miss New York. Oh, is she the one, the preliminary, she wore the one with the snakes on it, right? It is wild. It's yeah. wild. And my favorite gown, the gown I fell in love with is Miss South Carolina, Kelly Gosnell. It's black, it's simple, I love it. I want one for myself. In fact, she told me it costs just a fraction of the price of most competition gowns. See, that's the thing. People think that to compete in the pageant, you've got to spend thousands of dollars, and you really don't. No, you really don't. You really don't. You know who we do need to keep an eye on? Is Erin Nance, Miss Georgia. Now, she won the evening gown competition in preliminary. She looks tall, elegant, and beautiful. Well, tell me, this girl is coming on strong. I mean, look what so she did strong. in swimsuits. Look what she did in interview. And this is her strong point already. So she's charming the judges. All right, stay tuned for one of the most glamorous fashion shows you've ever seen. I love my... Thank them all, and right now I'd like to introduce you to the CEO of the Wichita Convention and Visitors Bureau, Mr. Joe Boyd, and his honor, the mayor of Wichita, Frank O'Giles. Gentlemen, thank you ever so much for joining us. And we'd also like to introduce you to two young women who currently wear crowns of their own, the reigning Miss Teen USA from Altoona, Iowa, Jamie Solinger, and the reigning Miss Universe from the city of Windhoek in the African nation of Namibia, Michelle McLean. Ladies, welcome. And representing the 1993 Miss Universe host committee from Mexico City, please welcome Mr. Carlos Corral, Mr. Juan Enriquez, Miss Mexico City, Sofia Gasquet, and Miss Mexico, Angelina Gonzalez. Thank you ever so much for joining us. We look forward to seeing you in May in Mexico City. And now, we come to the last of our semifinal events, the most beautiful moment of the evening, the evening gown competition. And tonight, we send a very special tribute to our service men and women everywhere. As our contestants appear in gowns of their own choice, they'll be serenaded by the United States Air Force Academy Cadet Corral and saluted by the Academy's Sabre Drill Team. Gentlemen, Cinderella at the ball never looked lovelier than our semi-finalists in the evening gown competition. And we begin with Miss California. Pennsylvania. 
Michigan. Tennessee. Texas. Georgia.
concludes our evening gown competition and our semifinals. It's a romantic setting, isn't it? How could you help but feel glamorous? All right, let's see what our judges thought about the girls in the evening gown competition, this last round of the semifinals. Miss Hawaii has pushed ahead to the lead now for evening gowns. Look how close it is between Hawaii and Miss New Jersey. Georgia is still right up there. Pennsylvania, California, everybody very close in the 9-6 category here in the middle of the pack for evening gowns. All right, right now all the numbers are being crunched. And when we come back, six lucky ladies are going to find themselves right in the finals. I really like Rice Krispie treats. You can make them. They're really easy. I watch my mom. Yeah? First, you want some marshmallow and margarine. Then, you pour in Kellogg's Rice Krispies. Then, you come out of the kitchen and put your hand like this and say, They're finally done. No, no. You're worth all the hard work. Then you could take it out to dinner. Kellogg's Rice Krispies Treats. So good, so easy. Oh, remember, girls, hairspray is your friend. <laughs> Those girls are all backstage, all nervous, I'm sure, trying to keep it all together until Dick is ready to announce the six finalists. Well, while the scores are being tabulated, let's bring back our reigning Miss USA, Shannon Marchetics, to give you a tour of this terrific city, Wichita, Kansas. It's the dawning of a new day across the heartland of America, and in the center of it all, Wichita, a city where quality of life counts, and family life comes first. I like witch talks and sports. I go swimming a lot in the summer. I like the arts. I like cowboys. With one of the highest living standards in America today, Wichita has attracted top national corporations in record numbers. Companies like Rent-A-Center. This pioneer in the rent-to-own industry has called Wichita home since 1973. Exporting a bit of the Wild West is Shepler's, with a variety of threads sure to please even the most demanding cowboys and cowgirls. The Century 2 Convention Center, one of the finest facilities in the Midwest, plays host to a variety of businesses and special events, like the Miss USA pageant. At the Wichita Sedgwick County Historical Museum, journey back in time with hundreds of exhibits, like this turn of the century corner drugstore. From a young age, cultural events such as ballet, concerts, and theater play an important role, making the arts feel right at home here in Wichita. Olé, caramba, fiesta. Who doesn't love a party? And Wichita is the place for a celebration. With pride in its ethnic diversity, there's Cinco de Mayo. Events for the whole family, like the annual Riverfest, Winterfest, and Wichita's hot and spicy culinary extravaganza, the Old Town Chili Cook-Off. What makes our chili special is the marshmallows. Travelers the world over are discovering Wichita and all that it has to offer. Great accommodations and tourist attractions for the whole family, such as the Old Cowtown Museum, the Sedgwick County Zoo, the beautiful flowers at Botanica, the Mid-America All Indian Center, and the Wichita Art Museum. But you know what they're finding most exciting? The great outdoors. Terrific fishing, hunting, camping, and hiking. Plus plenty of fresh air equals one great sportsman's paradise. All just a stone's throw away from downtown Wichita. Out here you can almost feel the spirit that once tamed this land. A spirit that looks to tomorrow, and a spirit that makes Wichita such a great place to live today. Right, kids? Yeah! Thank you, Shannon, and friends, and thank you, Wichita. 
Now, as we welcome back our 12 semifinalists, we're about to learn who will go on to the finals. If I may please have those results, thank you. Ladies, take a deep breath. I'll read these six names in random order from 12 to six. The finalists are Miss Michigan, Kenya Summer Moore. Miss Kansas, Tavia Shackles. Miss Pennsylvania, Kim Marie Johnson. Miss New Jersey, Amy Fissel. Two names remain. One is Miss Georgia, Aaron Nance. And finally, Miss Hawaii, Kelly Hoon. Ladies and gentlemen, the six finalists for the title of Miss USA 1993. Okay, hope your favorites made it. You know, they are thrilled, I'm sure, but those girls have got to be thinking about the next round of competition, the judges' questions, because this is when I think things get very intense, and only three will survive to the next round. Once again, we should tell you, all those previous scores, they're erased. The finalists begin with a clean slate. You'll continue to see individual judges' scores on your screen, but no composite score, so that will add to the suspense. That's what we need, more suspense here, right. These judges are a very diverse group, and no one can predict what questions they might ask, so stay tuned, anything can happen. Welcome back to our live show from Wichita, Kansas. Now our six finalists now have one more round of competition, which will narrow the field down to the final three. We call it the judges' questions. This is how it works. Each of our contestants will draw a question from the bowl here. Each judge has presented one in here, and they'll respond to that question from the judge. The contestant then has 20 seconds in which to answer, and there's a lot riding on this as the judges vote for the final three contestants. They'll consider not only the answer, They'll also see a video reminder of each young lady's appearance earlier in the swimsuit and evening gown competitions. Now, the score from the judge who asked the question will be highlighted on the list of scores on your screen. Judges, if you're ready, we'll start with Miss Michigan. If you'll pick a question, we'll get underway. All right, this first question comes from judge number six, Fred Heyman. Fred, May we have your question, please? Absolutely. Do you think it's appropriate for a first lady to participate in her husband's decision-making process as president? Why or why not? Well, I think that the first lady should participate in decision-making for the president. I think that women are always behind their men. And I think that a woman has a great influence on her husband or president or whomever that person may be. A woman has a strong voice, and I think it should be heard. Thank you very much. If you'd wait for the judges. Detroit's Carol Gist, remember, won Miss USA in 1990, and she and Kenya are friends, so we know there's a title holder back in the Motor City pulling for this young lady. Thank you very much. If you'd step back in Miss Kansas, if you'd come forward and select a question, please. All right. This comes from judge number nine, Mitzi Capture. Mitzi, may we have your question, please? If you were a victim of sexual harassment on the job, would you quit, keep quiet, or fight it? Well, I would definitely fight it. I think that victims need to stand up for their rights. And with as much publicity as sexual harassment is getting now, I think it's important for ladies in the workplace to take a stand and to show that we believe in ourselves and that we know who we are and that we don't have to take, we don't have to take sexual harassment and that we won't. And I would stand up and be an example for other women. Thank you very much. If you'd wait for a moment for the judges. 
Now remember, this is interesting, Kelly McCarty from Liberal Kansas won the title on this very stage in 1991. So if Tavia wins tonight, rack up a second victory for the Sunflower State. If you'd rejoin the others, please, Miss Pennsylvania. Got some more questions here, if you'll grab any one. This comes from uh, judge number five, Leah McCloskey. Leah, may we have your question, please? Women's roles in the U.S. have changed dramatically since the 1960s. Uh, what changes would you like to see next? Well, I'd like to see changes as far as women also, well, like President Clinton is doing, he's getting a lot of women in the House of Representatives. I think that also, um, I don't know, oh, geez. Sorry, well, relax, <laughs> take, a, take, a, take a second, take a second. Anything else on your mind? No. All right, fair enough, stay here for just a second. A couple of years ago, Kimmery's grandmother won a $5 million lottery. I have to wonder if good luck might run in her family. We'll soon find out. There you go. Thank you very much, Miss New Jersey. If you'll pull one out of there. <laughs> You're not looking. Are you superstitious? Let's see. All right, this is uh, judge number four, Richard Alleman. Richard, may we have your question, please? If you felt a law was unjust, would you disobey it to make a political statement? Absolutely not, but I might go about uh, fighting the law uh, for, for how I feel about it um, through legislature and writing to your congressman and, and doing things of that nature. I, I have done that before uh, concerning animals, um, so I know that it works. Thank you very much. Please wait here a moment. A little bit of interesting trivia, I guess, for you tonight. Amy told us that this is her lucky dress. We'll soon find out if this is also her lucky night. Thank you if you'd step back, Miss Georgia, if you come and take a question. We've got a few left here. All right, let's see what we have here. This is judge number two, Richard Mall. Richard, may we have your question, please? Yes, indeed. As times change, what contemporary woman do you think is the best role model for your generation, and why? Definitely Hillary Clinton. As the president's wife, she's shown America that we can focus on our future and be more concerned about our career and balance it with, a par with parenthood. And if 92 were the year of the woman, then the 90s could become the decade of the woman. Thank you very much. Please wait for the judges a moment. Erin is actually named after her 80-year-old grandmom. Her grandmother's here tonight to cheer on her namesake. If you will, please step back. Miss Hawaii, if you'll come forward, we'll stir up what we have left in the bowl here. All right, this is uh, judge number eight, Ron Greshner. Ron, may we have your question, please? Do you think women in the armed forces should be allowed to serve in combat? Why or why not? I think definitely, if a woman thinks that she is able to serve in combat, then we should allow her to. Uh, there should be no reason why she shouldn't. If a woman feels that she has the right or she would like to die for her country then by all means give her that chance thank you very much please wait here a moment a lot of the pageant veterans feel that kelly with her exotic good looks could do well at miss universe but first she's got to do well with these judges thank you very much if you'd rejoin the others ladies and gentlemen that completes the judges questions for our six finalists thank you ladies girls did really, really well. I mean, it's very difficult. How would you like to try answering questions in front of 300 million people? Well, you've done it, I yes, forget. Yes, I have, but those you know, questions. Pennsylvania got stumped just a little bit, but these girls were very strong, very definitive in very, their answers. Those were amazing questions. Yeah, I, you know, it's funny because my, my reaction is it makes me very proud to be a woman because I think we're being well represented here tonight. Absolutely. You are the resident expert. Let's just put you on the line. Ooh. Predict the final three. Oh, that is so tough. They were amazing. I mean, Kansas was fabulous. Michigan was fabulous. George was great. Hawaii was great. I mean, they all really came forward. I'm going to go with Hawaii. She's experienced, and I think she's cool under this last question. Right. And uh, Kansas did fabulous. She's got so many people pulling for her. And my last, Georgia. Georgia did extremely well. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting, Kansas and Georgia seem to be where the crowd was tonight, if That's you could right. hear from our, our response here in the auditorium. All right. Did you choose those three? We're going to find out who the judges chose when we come back. I live with the times. I expect progress, performance, never.
We're back, and I'm about to get the names of our final three contestants. Thank you, sir. Once again, I'll name them in random order. The final three are Miss Georgia Aaron Nance. Miss Michigan, Kenya Summer Moore. One finalist's name, it's Miss Kansas, Tavia Sackle. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, one of these three will be the new Miss USA. Impressed. Me, well, you got two out of three. Two out of three. Yeah. All right. They're so excited. There's so much tension going on right now. It just keeps getting higher and higher from now to the crowning. And now those three have to face, of course, the final question. Do you remember this moment when you competed? Oh, I do. Except I was in a coma, but somehow I just came through and answered the question. It is a high-pressure situation. This is the last chance to capture the crown. Let's go back to the stage. Ladies, I think you will be relieved to hear that this is the last round of competition. The final question, I'll ask each of you the very same question. You'll have 20 seconds in which to respond and to make sure that all works right. Miss Kansas and Miss Michigan, if you go into the isolation booth there, they'll put some rushing air noise in your ears so you can't hear the question because everybody gets the same one. Once they're in there, here we go. Final question. What do you think the judges see in you that brought you to the final three tonight? I'm a very loving person, and I'm, I'm very excited to be here. And this is definitely a dream come true for me. And if I were chosen as Miss USA, I think that I could be, become a positive role model for the teenagers by telling them to dream great dreams and make them come true, because mine was a dream, and I'm here. <laughs> thank you very much. If you would step over here for a moment, thank you. You send out Miss Michigan, please. Miss Michigan, if you come forward, you're going to get the same question everybody gets. What do you think the judges see in you that brought you to the final three tonight? I think the judges can look into my eyes and see my heart and know that I'm a sincere person, that I'm here because of, not because of me, because I want to help as many people as I can. I want to reach out to children across America and let them know that there is someone that cares about them. And that if they try and they believe in themselves and they believe in God, that especially in America, anything is possible. Thank you very much. If you'd step over here. And finally, please, Miss Kansas. Here we go. Same question. What do you think the judges see in you that brought you to the final three tonight? Well, I hope that they see my genuineness. I feel like I'm an example of some high standards. I have high morals for myself. I hope that they see that I'm someone who not only talks the talk, but someone who walks the walk. And I hope that... And I hope that they remember that uh, I really am just Tavia Shackles being myself here for you tonight. And I'm a real person, and, and I hope that everybody leaves with a little piece of, of me in your heart. Thank you very much. Each step over here. Good answers, ladies. Really good stuff. Now, we'll give our judges uh, one last moment to make their decision. This is the final vote to determine the winner. Now, as each contestant steps forward, the judges will give her a ranking of three, two, or one. That says they vote for her to be the second runner-up, the first runner-up, or the new Miss USA. And we'll begin with Miss Georgia. Miss Michigan. And 
Miss Kansas. Ladies and gentlemen, that completes our competition for Miss USA 1993. Ladies, if you join me center stage, we'll have the judge's decision as soon as the scores are verified. Thank you. All right, time to chew your fingernails. We'll soon find out. And while we're waiting for the scores to be tabulated, we do want to remind you that later this evening, we'll give you some information about how you can enter the pageant. That's right. If you're between the ages of 15 and 26, call the 800 number and you'll see at the end of the show. And we'll send you information about entering the Miss USA or Miss Teen USA pageant. And who knows, you could be wearing a crown next year. After all, a crown goes with everything, doesn't it? It's Absolutely. Like pearls. It's like everything. Pearls. All right, we'll know who's going to wear the crown tonight in just a moment. So stay tuned. As you know, we're continuing to make changes at Kmart. We're building new stores and remodeling others. We've improved quality, and we've completely restyled our fashions. Yet, we still want you to know that any time and every time you walk into our stores, you'll get the low, low Kmart price you want. The one thing that will never change is my desire to make Kmart the best place for you to shop. granola great for taste but loaded with fat now there's prepare to crown the new miss usa it's time to say farewell to the young woman from malibu california who's worn the crown for the past year ladies and gentlemen for the last time as miss usa here is shannon marchetti my reign as miss usa has been one of the most exciting chapters in my life from the night i was crowned here in wichita my year has been filled with many memorable experiences Working with the D.A.R.E. Drug Education Program and with abused and handicapped children greatly enriched my life. On our USO tour to Korea, I was able to extend a personal thank you and a little bit of home to our men and women overseas. The year was full of public appearances, many television shows, and the fun of meeting celebrities. I'd like to thank the two most instrumental people in my life, my parents, who are the wind beneath my wings. To my fiancé and best friend, Jim Farmer, thank you for letting me discover the greatest treasure one person can give another, love. Finally, I thank God for the many blessings bestowed on my life and for each new day with all the hope that it brings. Thank you, Shannon. Much good luck. Now, in a moment, we'll have the judges' rankings. They've been tabulated, and we're ready to reveal the second and first runners-up and the new Miss USA. The accounting firm of Ernst & Young has reviewed the results for accuracy. Mr. Mark Ward, if you'd give me the printout, sir. Thank you very much. To assist us, we have uh, two reigning title holders, Miss Teen USA, Jamie Solinger, and Miss Universe, Michelle McLean. Thank you, ladies, for joining us. <laughs> ladies, you've represented your states beautifully. Congratulations, you've all done well, but the judges have chosen just one, and the second runner-up is Miss Kansas Tavia Shackles. Please come forward. I'm about to reveal the name of the first runner-up and the new Miss USA. Let me remind you of the importance of the first runner-up. If Miss USA can't complete her reign for any reason, then that could include the possibility she may have to give up her title. If she becomes the new Miss Universe this May in Mexico, our first runner-up will become Miss USA. Ladies, good luck to both of you. The first runner-up is Miss Georgia. Miss Michigan, Kenya Summer Moore is Miss USA. Congratulations, you are the new Miss USA, Kenya. The cash awards and prizes are yours, and you'll represent our country at the 1993 Miss Universe pageant in Mexico City. And now, as our entire cast serenades you, the stage is yours as the new Miss USA 1993.
pre-recorded. After you've tried courtroom justice and prayed for poetic justice, your only hope may be dark justice. All new Dark Justice later tonight on Crime Time After Prime Time. This is Mark McEwen. Thanks for making CBS America's most watched network. I'll see you Monday on CBS This Morning. Now get ready for your local news. <laughs>